podcast today. So the first one that I want you to answer, you kind of just yeah. mentioned about them is the Elohim. Now I yeah. think most people know the word from biblical, uh, obviously work and scripture, you know, they've heard of mm. the Elohim in both the new Testament, yeah. and the old Testament, but mm. define, you know, in the idea of, we have two factions of angels aligned and factional in that they're fighting the Caribbean yeah. and the Seraphim. Who are yeah. the Elohim in that group? Okay. That's fine. Well, um, to answer that question, we have to go back into the ancient etymology referring to the, um, Elohim. So for example, um, the, the Elohim are identified with um, the Watchers. So there's an etymological connection between Elohim and Erin, which are the Watchers or the Shining Ones. Um, and uh, we find this correspondence also within the Greek. So this is a polyglottal symbol. So in Greek, we find that there's a relationship between Theos God and Theoros, a Watcher, which relates to Therion, which is a beast. Now, this is important because uh, when we look at who are the Watchers, Erin, which are the Watchers. Well, when we go into the Testament of Amran, we find out who the Erin are. In the Testament of Amran, um, Amran, who is Moses' father, um, he states that the Erin had the face like a viper. So the Watchers are the um, um, the Watchers. The Watchers are the shining ones. Have a face like a viper. So it's very clear that the Erin are basically the Seraphim. And we find the same wordplay also within um, the etymology of seraphim. So it's um, self effer watcher and seraph, which it, which are the seraphim, which is so the Elohim are basically another word for the um, um, seraphim, uh, as as demonstrated also within the Greek and within the Aramaic. So yes, so we're dealing here with the seraphim. Um, and again, this is also played out within Yahweh Sabaoth's name as well. So if we look at um, Sabaoth, uh, Sabaoth means host, so Yahweh Sabaoth, Lord of the host. Um, Sabaoth is where we would get Sevet, which is a crew member of a naval vessel. Um, but, but again, um, Saba, which is host, is related to Sephef, which is a viper. So this is the seraphic host. And again, when you're looking at depictions of um, the host, so for examples, when you look at depictions of uh, the opening wheels, often they're shown with eyes around the edge. And again, this is a representation of the watchers. And again, they're shown as shining as well with shining eyes or flames. And again, this is because the... Um, um, the etymologies of a uh, watcher and flaming ones are um, etymologically connected. So that's um, so the Elohim are basically um, the watchers are, are the seraphim. And um, and when we go into the name of Yahweh, also this is very interesting because uh, Yahweh is coming from um, the, the old um, the old way of um, transliterating the name of uh, Yahweh, according to Bullinger, um, who was uh, who wrote a, a large commentary on the Bible and was a noted theologian, he argued that the name Yahweh is um, transliterated as Eya. And again, this um, this links into my research as well. Now, Eya is, um, Yahweh is coming from Eya, which is I am, but Eya is a wordplay on the Aramaic word Aya, which is um, Aya, which is a serpent, and Ayal, which is a goblin. So again, so it's kind of just telling you exactly how it is. You know, Yahweh is the Lord of the host, but specifically is the Lord of the seraphic host. And his name is actually linked in uh, to the etymology of a serpent or a okay. goblin. Well, let me just stop you. By the way, that was yeah. profound. That a lot of people, a lot of people are going to be helped as Jake knows for what he just said, because you essentially just co decoded that the Elohim or the Elohim or however yeah. you pronounce it, are essentially reptilian angels. Yeah. Okay. Now let's yeah, right. now let's just define their ability. Now, I, actually, just be, so I'll just go back because a lot of people are saying, "Ah, oh, yeah, but Sabak, you're wrong about this because uh, the Elohim made man in their own image." But again, this is just not true because when you look at the biblical uh, word image, uh, the the word basically translates as an idol. And, and again, it, it, it's basically talking about a genetic engineered model. Right. So this is something, again, which is very well, different. You know what, Pierre? That's why we have the mammalian brain and the reptilian, yeah, yep. reptilian brain. Right. And, and again, it's, it's kind of um, 
the the English is working on the Greek word play. So Achan, which is um, an image, is a play on the Babylonian word Achan, which is a seraph. So the the translators of the Bible are playing these um, intellectual word games, right. and this is what the priesthood do. They have this private discourse, and they're continually playing their word games. And again, with, with it, whether it's in Oxford, Cambridge, or wherever, um, all this. Um, so, for example, with the hieroglyphs a lot of the hieroglyphs are really problematic and we we have the means to deconstruct the hieroglyphs and why hasn't it been done properly and why aren't people working on this this is important the reason why is because the priesthood don't want this information out. right I mean, this is basically what it is so the information is codified the information has been out there and it's been out there for a long time. We've had disclosure. We've had it for thousands of years. <laughs> right. yep. been hidden. That's, that's the only problem. Yeah. Right? But the word etymology there, disclosure, means it will never be really closed. It's dysfunctional. <laughs> disclosure. Right. That's right. Well, again, again, we're, we're, we're tripping up over uh, words all the time. Um, right. We become enslaved to words. And, and I think that you've made a very good point there because words – work at a subliminal level right. and so language affects not only how we think but also how we behave so you control language or you control the artifact and you control particularly the subtext below the language then you control the behavior and we, we're seeing this now in terms of let's say th there's a, an attempt to um, denigrate masculinity remove masculinity yep. right. um, such as referring to toxic man masculinity and there's a change within the language because if you want to change the behavior you have to uh, change people's um, perceptions and their perception of reality is um, conditioned through language and so that's where they go for first of all uh, the ideology is um, is through the language so I want I want to go back to Yahweh for a second because yes. that's a big trip up for most people as you know <laughs> in religious teachings especially the Abraham <laughs> religious teachings um is Yahweh and again one of the topics that we were going to talk about is obviously the di the dialectic yeah the, the differential and you know how they confuse man with the obviously um a race of you know poly god poly mm -hmm. worship versus monotheistic yeah is is Yahweh just the name and again obviously I want your opinion on this and you've declined mm -hmm. But is Yahweh the name of the highest seraphic reptilian angel, or is it just an amalgam amalgamation of the, the seraphim? Yeah, it's a very good question. That is, um, I think Yahweh is obviously um, a powerful en entity, um, but uh, uh, there are various different competing Elohims um, around the planet. I mean, they, they seem to be at war with themselves and they're, they're like us they're, they're at war with themselves in a sense so um and and um we're finding this also um on our own planet as well um a lot of the wars are based upon these humanist and seraphic um dialectic um and different groups of the priesthood are allied either to the humanist tradition or to the non-humanist tradition hence the split within the priesthood and, and you find it throughout the priesthood whether it's sunni and shiite or protestant and catholic um, but again th there are these um, signifiers which suggest a humanist and a, a non-human um, division do you think do you think it's fair to say mm -hmm. and you can follow this up for me do you think it's fair to say that yahweh equals lucifer equals satan <clears throat> i think i think a cult, a cultists have represented yahweh in in that way and i think that let me let me frame it another way the people who control this planet right they want to control everything right. so they people. Control, okay well, I'll use the word anthropos because <laughs> the Greeks used the word anthropos to you refer to sentient beings, which yeah. were human or otherwise. So, <clears throat> but um, yes, um, so I'm just trying to remember now the um, anthropos. Um, <laughs> the people sorry, my head's a bit fuzzy because I've been unwell for a few days. Um, uh, yeah. Well, do, 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 do. 
Okay. Well, so what? Where I got from all this stuff, um, mm -hmm. so Pierre, you know, I'm just, um, I read. Jay and I, we text a lot and we brainstorm a lot of these mm. things we come across, right? And yeah, um, obviously through your research and your references, you've done a lot of um, research putting all of this stuff together. Now, um, what I will say uh, about Huawei and and mm. all this stuff is that. That's, um, I get a lot of pushback on people, hmm. people, Yahweh, that's, that's the tetragrammatron, you know, and, uh, it's not Pythagoras, and Euclidean, hmm. it's Joachim and Boaz, and, you know, all these people hmm. are arguing about the same words, just different, exactly. people using them in yeah. different books, and people don't understand hmm. that when you get an Ascension handbook, and it says it's from Serapis, right? Exactly. Where would Serapis be from? He's a seraphim, right? Right. And right. you could, hmm. to me, uh, hmm. and Pierre, I'm sure you would agree, hmm. there's, there's like three ways to really hack this matrix. One is the codex of language, or the syntax yeah. of language, which you've done. Hmm. Um, one would be the numerical code in this matrix you know gematria yeah. all that stuff and the other one is just symbols from occultists yeah, and yeah. ancient traditions mm -hmm. leaving their mm -hmm. symbols behind now mm -hmm. the way i understood it is that um yahweh is the lord of the hosts he's you know the head yeah. uh anthropos the head that of the military. Have. yeah and um then you have the cherubim and mm -hmm. the reptilians the mm -hmm. cherubim the Pleiades. Yeah. now yeah from what I understood, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Elohim seem to be um, a non, they're a non, an unsanctioned grafted bloodline. So okay. there's the yeah. rulers meant for the earth, you know, the elites, mm. the, the royals and the presidents and all that stuff. And then there's the Elohim that are, are kind of the unsanctioned ones. And we see a lot of infighting. Okay. Between yeah, the Elohim um, that's the, right. That's the, um, that's the Nephilim. Uh, which are uh, the unsanctioned um, bloodline. Uh, the, Nef the Nephilim were the progeny of the Bene Helloim, the sons of the gods and the daughters of um, men, which can be found in the book of um, Gen Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 6, or um, in the um, book of Enoch as well. Yeah, um, book of Enoch as, uh, as well. So yeah, book of Enoch. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, the, the, the Nephilim, and uh, the, the Nephilim um, is from the root word um, Nephil, which is a, a giant. And again, that they are related etymologically to Nephilia, which is Orion. You find the same correspondence with the um, Jibberim. They were referred to as the mighty men of renown. Um, the Jibberim, Jibor, which is Orion. So we know that they originate from Orion. And this was an unsanctioned bloodline, which were wiped out um, with the flood. Um, and um, and devastated the earth, killed humanity and, and everything. And then the earth was replanted. So, um, and then that's with the story of uh, Noah's Ark. So yeah, basically the sanctioned bloodline are this um, human seraphic bloodline, which are a grafted or a stitched bloodline. Um, and we find evidence for this um, within, um, within the Greek and Hebrew. So for example, it, it's a special type of wordplay. It's known as diptych paranomasi. So when you when you when there's a wordplay from one la one language into another, um, so for example, the um, Hebrew word anak, which is a giant, right. um, in Greek, anax is a prince, and so the prince is related to this um, um, seraphic bloodline. But again, you would find the correspondence also within the Greek with archon. And um, yes. archon meaning an angel, but it can also mean a ruler, a principality from arcane, which is to rule. Um, and again, the archons are related to arcs or vessels um, in the Greek olkas, which is a large carrier vessel. So the archons are these, um, again, it's going back to the naval tradition or the angelic tradition. So um, the archons are these heavenly rulers which um, fly around in these um, vessels or wheels. Um, in the Greek traditions, they flew around in shields. So, um, do you do you consider the archons to be on par with the Elohim yes, above question. them? Um, yeah. Um, the the archons are the seraphim, and this is because of the connection between archon and akan, the Babylonian word um, meaning a seraph. 
a flaming seraph. So the archons are equivalent to the um, seraphim. So, and, and again, this is going into the um, um, the the ruler or kingship. Um, so in, in the Greek, you've got the archons, which is an angel or a ruler. But again, in the Hebrew, it would be Malak, an angel, Melech, which is a king. Um, we said that Malak is also a sailor, so kingship to be born of a boat. Um, uh, in, in the Greek, archon and nuarchos, which would be a captain of a vessel. So again, there is this um, naval tradition, which is at the basis of this. Um, in the Aramaic, you would have a connection between, let's say, um, Zar and Angel, Sa, which is um, a prince or a captain. So again, there, there are these um, correspondences, but it, it's found that it's found all over, over the place. I mean, in now, English, we'd refer to Highness, wouldn't we? Which you, is High, which are the Elohim. Do you Sorry. consider for people to um, see this in like a really simple way? Hmm. What would the power structure, I, I know the power structure because, you know, be in your book, but, you know, the Yahweh, hmm. then is it the Seraphim, then the Cherubim? You know, yeah. how does this contr control structure? Yeah, what's the hierarchical ranking system? <laughs> yeah. I think you know, kind of somewhere at the bottom <laughs> on yeah. the ranking system. Yeah. We're at the bottom <laughs> of the food chain. Uh, but this is, um, I mean, and this is what the civil wars have all been about um, in, in terms of do we, do we have these grafted bloodlines, these monarchical bloodlines, uh, which rule through bloodline and which have been sanctioned? Or does man rule in himself or does humanity rule do we rule ourselves um and this has been um a prescient question and it's been one which has been addressed for centuries and it's been at the root of um hundreds of wars so um so yeah it's a question which um people are still trying to um well resonate with and also a question which people are still trying to answer today um but it but essentially i i believe that we are mature enough as a species to be allowed to um, govern ourselves. And I think that this is important that we need to be um, given this freedom to um, to rule ourselves and to be given our, our sovereignty because otherwise um, we're just enslaved whether we, whether okay, we know.